The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first and the first will be last. Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wow. Well, one thing you learn if you spend enough time with the scriptures is that God's measurements are not our measurements. God operates using a set of metrics and priorities, a different set of metrics and priorities than we do. In fact, God's understanding of generosity, particularly generosity, is so different than ours, sometimes it even violates our sense of right and wrong and what's fair and what's not fair. Sometimes Jesus violates our sense of how things would be if we ran the world. I'm thinking of the shepherd who risks 99 sheep to go look after the one. I mean, what kind of logic is that? I'm thinking about Jesus watching the rich drop bags of money into the temple treasury. But when a poor widow drops a penny Jesus claims her gift to be the most extravagant. Stick that one in your calculator. And then we have today's gospel, which takes God's incomprehensibleness to a whole different level. In this strangest of parables, we meet a farmer who's got a harvest of grapes. So early, early in the morning, this Farmer heads to say the town square where the day laborers gather. And in the pre-dawn light, he sees the regular cast of characters. These are people who know the drill and who agree to work for the standard daily rate of say $100. But by 9 a.m., the farmer sees he's got more work um, than workers. So back again, he goes to town where other laborers have gathered and off they go with him back to the farm. The farmer repeats this ritual at 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. But the farmer wasn't done. 
he'd make one more journey at 5 p.m. This time picking up a group of folks who said they somehow hadn't been asked, but were eager to come. Now this last group wouldn't work long at all before the harvest was done. So the workers are assembled, it's time to get paid, and the foreman begins with those hired on last to the job, the people who came at five right before they got dismissed. The 5 p.m. workers who didn't even work an hour must have been thrilled to see a crisp $100 bill. And there was a $100 bill for the three o'clock group and the next group and the next. Lastly, the early birds. They got their wages, the wages that they had agreed upon, the flat $100. Let the grumbling begin. Really, one hour's work is the same as 12 hours work? So do we just write this off? I mean, as you know, saying, there goes Jesus using that nutty math again. But we know Jesus is not just telling this story about an eccentric farmer with a whacked out pay scale for the heck of it. He's meaning to teach us something, something about God, as well as something about how we are to live today. So what does this story teach us about God? It teaches us once again that there is a quotient in Jesus's math that we don't figure in to our equation. And that, in a word, is grace. Jesus's extravagant grace. Grace being God's unmerited favor, God's unaccountable and lavish love for us. This parable is actually a lot like the parable of the prodigal son, in which the elder son, like the early bird workers, is indignant. The younger brother who squandered his inheritance is lavishly welcomed home. It's just not fair, he says. It's not fair that older brother who seemingly did everything right not only, though, does he not come off as being right, not only does he not come off smelling like a rose, he's the stinker. Unlike most of human love, which is conditional, human love is conditional, the grace that the father shows his son does not hinge on what he did or didn't do. God just loves period. God just loves. But this crazy kind of love God shows us, this brand of love is hard to receive. I mean, it's hard to even comprehend this type of love, much less live into it. And how do we get past this unfairness factor? Well, let's look at how it plays out right here at church. Some of us come to church regularly. Um, you know, the ones who show up Sunday after Sunday, the people who maybe have been um, church people their entire lives. Now, we all lately, <laughs> let's face it, have been kind of worshiping at good old St. Mattress, haven't we? But today, Jesus is telling us that the insiders and those who come to the show late, maybe through an ad on Facebook, we're all gonna get the same reward. And we've gotta be all right with that. This passage tells us that the comparison business that, that is worrying about who got what, when will I get mine, who deserved what, that comparison is a devilish racket that will make us nothing but crazy. Now, I just mentioned the word deserve. 
This word certainly is one of the most dangerous utterings that can come from a Christian's mouth. You can bet that the idea of deserving is the subtext of the workers' grumblings. Worrying who is deserving and who isn't. Well, that's no better than comparing paychecks with people. When it comes to grace, our job is to leave the comparing and deserving conversations for other things. When it comes to grace, our job is simply to receive it. To receive God's gift of pure, cleansing, unadulterated grace. To open our hearts, to open our minds, to open our lives, and to let that grace in. So when the vineyard owner comes asking for our service. May we go joyfully, a worker among workers. And when the time comes for compensation, may we see that our reward will last for eternity. Amen.